I take the phrase beauty favorites very seriously. I am so serious about this. I've got to be using it every day non-stop before we can step back and officially declare indeed this is a beauty favorite. And I think that's why I don't do uh, monthly beauty favorites videos because the benchmark is so high. I take it very seriously. I take it too seriously. I've collected a selection of products that have passed this stringent testing criteria and I'm going to put them on my face today so that you can see how they perform and I'm going to tell you why I love them and I hope you enjoy. All right, let's start with a little bit of skincare. Uh, this is the Dr. Barbara Sturm face cream. So Dr. Barbara Sturm is the woman who created uh, the vampire facial. Do you remember that, um, that picture of Kim K where her face appeared to be bleeding and everyone freaked out? Vampire facial created by this lady and she also um, now has a skincare line. Her career path is very fascinating to me. Um, it's worth googling if you're interested. So the first time that I used this face cream I thought to myself, oh no, nah, this is just not going to be enough for me because the the consistency is very fluid and very lightweight and as you guys know I have a very dry skin type but actually this is so quenching on like dehydration and dryness. It's really soothing. I'm also very prone to dermatitis and eczema. My skin has become really sensitive over the past year and this feels really soothing and lovely. But just a warning, this stuff is so expensive, so incredibly expensive, but man, it's just so good. Like I've been thinking about buying the face cleanser as well. So, so expensive. All right, let's talk about SPF. Uh, so I have worked with Dermalogica for a good while now. I think they are such a solid skincare brand. And I have been fortunate enough to test and trial the majority of the line. I'm starting to feel like a little bit like the unofficial Dermalogica expert. And this is my all time favorite Dermalogica product. It's the Skin Perfect Primer SPF 30. All right, so let me tell you what I like about this product. So it is an SPF, but it also doubles up as a pore filling primer. So it's got that kind of silicon slip, really smoothing on texture. I really like the idea of a cosmetically elegant SPF. So actually, um, to research, I actually went out and tried a few other um, SPFs with silicon bases, including the Murad one. I want to say it's Invisiblur. And man, that one just peeled on me so much. Um, it, it didn't layer very nicely with many of my foundations and would ball up. Uh, whereas the Dermalogica layers beautifully under anything. And then the other thing that I really like about this product is that it is a physical SPF, a physical blocker. Um, and I'm generalizing here, but physical sunscreens tend to be better for sensitive skin types. And as I said, I've been dealing with this dermatitis and this eczema, and so I'm opting for those physical sunscreens as not to exacerbate my existing uh, sensitivities. I love it. It slots so seamlessly into my routine and it also makes my makeup last longer. In my glossy highlights video, I got a comment um, that said something along the lines of, uh, yeah, that's nice, but which is your favorite glossy highlight? And I was like, you guys, that's like asking me which is my favorite child, but just quietly. The one that I've been using most is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand. I mentioned in that video that I use this underneath my foundation. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So just straight over your skincare and your SPF and I put it kind of on the tops of the cheekbones, a little bit here, a little bit here. And then I just take my fingertips and I really roughly blend that in. See, even without any coverage products, I think that that just makes the skin look so beautiful, even on a bare face. Um, but if you want to hear more about that, I'm going to link the glossy video, the glossy highlight video on the screen. <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little bit sheepish when I mention this product because A, I mention it so often and B, it's not available in the United States. I'm so sorry. The YSL Fusion Ink Cushion, this is the foundation that I wear every day. It's got a sheer to medium coverage and it's really dewy, but one of the things I like most about this that's been really helpful recently is that it, it glides over textured areas. So where I've had that kind of bumpy, rushy situation around my mouth, it just doesn't draw attention to that, whereas every other foundation that I put on it, it's like, oh. oh. But this foundation has just been gliding over that texture and it makes the bumpiness look less apparent than it actually is. I'm just gonna quickly conceal under my eyes, this is the Tarte Shape Tape. 
spoken about this at length, use it in every video, you know the drill. I have two powders that I alternate between. So if I'm having a really long day or if I'm filming um, and I don't want to necessarily look as glossy as I do right now, then I'll use the, the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. This is more absorbent um, than, than my next option, which is my old standby, you guys, Rouge Bunny Rouge Diaphanous. This is the powder that I use more day to day and it is so incredibly fine, you can't see it on the skin. It just mutes shine a little bit. I've been using and loving this one for years and I reiterate, this is the powder for people that dislike powder because you genuinely cannot see product on the skin. Let's talk about an eyeshadow palette that I've been loving. This one really snuck up on me. The NARS Wanted eyeshadow palette. So when I received this, I was like, yeah, it's, it's a pretty neutral eyeshadow palette, right? But then I just kept reaching for it over and over again. And now I'm starting to appreciate it for the workhorse that it is. I'm gonna take a little bit of this one here through the crease. If I had one critique, I would say that I wish there was a mid-tone grade kind of color. Just for those days that where I don't want it all over entirely warm eye, I think a mid-tone gray would have been nice, but ah, that's just a matter of personal preference. Then I'm just gonna deepen the outer socket here with a mix of these two shades. Essentially, I'm recreating um, the eye look that I was wearing in that glossy highlights video. I had so many requests for a tutorial. It's so simple. Here it is. <laughs> just building the intensity on this outer lid, outer third, until you get a little bit of that kind of elongated shape. And then I'm gonna go into um, this sort of champagne shimmer. My brush is a little bit damp here, um, but these shadows do apply well dry. It's just that I've done my base, right? Fallout, fallout is a pain in the neck. So I'm trying to minimize the amount of eyeshadow I get on my cheeks. These shimmers perform beautifully, whether used dry or wet. And obviously the mattes are really easy to blend. I just really enjoy this formula. So this is a pretty enough eye look. But wait, this is where the real magic comes in. Glitter. There are a few um, glitter kind of eyeshadows in, in this palette. And I'm sure some of you are like, why? Why have you polluted this beautiful neutral palette with glitters? But I love glitter. Um, this is like my daytime glitter. I just kind of lightly pat it all around. And it just gives this kind of interesting nuance and sparkle. It's like a top coat. And I'm just finishing off the lower lash line with some of those mattes just to get a little bit of depth there, depth and definition. And there you go. Here is my daytime glitter eye look as seen in my glossy highlights video using the NARS Wanted palette. This is a limited edition item, I believe. So if you want it and it's gonna be a workhorse for you too, then I would get in quick. One other critique, a small, minor, but rather irritating. There's something about the opening of this that is quite, difficult and I keep gouging the eyeshadows. In terms of eyeliner, I've actually noticed myself starting to gravitate towards gel eyeliners again. I love liquid liners, but it's always like, you gotta put your game face on, you gotta like really get in the zone because it's do or die. Whereas gel eyeliners, I feel like they're more forgiving. Uh, this is in the shade Patina Ink by Bobbi Brown. And again, this is not black. It's a little bit more of a patina color and it's more forgiving, the edges are soft. And I can do this whether I'm half asleep or over caffeinated or what have you. <laughs> All right, two mascaras that I have been loving recently. I've got a drugstore option, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, and then a hella bougie option, the Tom Ford Shutter Lash. I'm gonna apply the L'Oreal Lash Paradise on my right eye. A lot of people have likened this to the Too Faced Better Than Sex and I totally see that. It's, it's got a very similar wand and it overloads the lashes. It gives a lot of volume. And then on the left eye, I'm gonna apply the Tom Ford Shutter Lash. So this is a different breed of mascara altogether. It's uh, more separating and lengthening. It really fans out the lashes really nicely. It does hold a curl uh, relatively well, but the major con here is hella expensive. <laughs> I'm gonna put a poll in the, in the corner of the screen. Which do you prefer? The way that the L'Oreal Paradise looks or the way that the Tom Ford Shutter Lash looks? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. <laughs> All right, let's talk brows. I keep coming back to the Holika Holika Wonder Drawing Skinny Eyebrow, which is like a fine tipped eyebrow pencil. 
but it's perfect. It's like not too hard, but not too soft. It's a very, very gray shade because I'm one of those people, if I put anything in my brows that has even the slightest bit of warmth, it turns orange. It makes me look legitimately like I have ginger brows. So this gray color is really fab. And also this is very inexpensive. It's like a few dollars. And then for brow gel, you guys actually recommended that I try the Benefit 24 hour brow setter brow gel and you're right, this stuff is awesome. Um, the comb is interesting when you look closely, like one side of the comb has longer bristles and then the other side of the comb has shorter bristles and you get a slightly different effect is what I'm saying. I like to use the longer bristle side and it gives this beautiful texture and definition and it kind of looks a little bit shiny, which I like. It almost looks like a little bit of an editorial glossy brow in finish. The hold is not as good as soap, right? Soap is your like, hardcore concrete um, for the brows, but this is a lot more convenient if you're running out the door and you don't want to be fiddling with a bar of soap. A bronzer that I just keep coming back to, this is the Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light. And I'm going to use this brush. This brush is amazing. Let me tell you the story of this brush. It's the It Cosmetics CC Plus Double Airbrush Ball Powder. I love this brush so much. What do they do? They go and discontinue it. Dear It Cosmetics, I will give you my firstborn child. Please reintroduce the CC Plus Double Airbrush Ball Powder brush, please. Moving on. <laughs> it's just a really lovely bronzer. It does have shimmer in it. Uh, FYI, if you really don't like shimmer in, in, your, in your face products. But do you know what? Like I say, I'm not a huge fan of shimmer in my base products, but this just works. It just looks really beautiful and luminous and not cheap or chunky or glittery in any way. You guys know that I'm not a huge uh, blush wearer myself because I'm quite rosy in the cheeks uh, already. But when I do want a little something something, I've been reaching for the MAC Extra Dimension Blush in Fairly Precious. And this is totally aligned with my blush preferences, like your MAC Warm Soul and your Milani Luminoso. It's like half blush, half highlight. This one's got a good amount of shimmer in it, but I just like it. I'm just liking a little bit of luminosity on the cheeks. Yes, catch that light. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that shine. Oh, fabulous. Let's talk about some of my favorite lip products of the moment. Uh, and this essentially involved me emptying the, the lip products out of my handbags. These are the ones that I always carry around. And I feel like that's a good indication of, uh, you know, how much you love something. So I've got two lip liners here. This is Marc Jacob Nudist. I like that this one is uh, in a retractable lip liner form. Uh, so I'm not in the back of an Uber just like scratching my lips with a blunt pencil. No, <laughs> that doesn't happen to anyone else, just me, okay. Uh, this one also doesn't have a lot of pink to it at all. It reads very, very beige on me. So this is kind of when I want that beige, beige lip. And then the other lip liner that I've been carrying around recently is the Chanel uh, Precision Lip Definer in 34. And this one is definitely lighter. It's just a very easy lip liner to wear. Just rub it all over the lips. Really comfortable formula, this one. Hopefully you can see the difference here. Chanel on the bottom, Marc Jacobs on the top. Marc Jacobs is a little bit more of a kind of deeper beige. And then the Chanel is more of a lighter nude. So most days I do that. I just kind of scribble lip liner all over my lips. And then I'll top with um, like a balm of some sort. And the balm that I've been carrying around recently, this is the Givenchy uh, La Rouge Perfecto in perfect pink. But it's essentially like a, a very softly tinted balm. And it sounds like such a, like a boring product. Like I never think to myself, you know what I really want? I want a tinted balm. No, boring. But it's the kind of product that gets the most use. Toss that on. I do find this lip balm to be legitimately hydrating and it just gives the lips this kind of flush of pink and it makes them look really juicy. It just does something more um, than, than the clear lip balms that I've carried around in the past. Love that. And another product that I've recently discovered and it just makes me really happy, um, I believe this is the Suku Lip Something in 109. And it's essentially like a balm, but it has like a golden reflect in it. Just let me show you. I see, I see you're not convinced. Let me show you. There is a golden reflect through that lip color, right? But it's not frosty or cheap. It's done really well, like glistening and, and faceted. It's, it's Suku, right? 
you, it trusts Suki to master this really nuanced, glistening lip. Love it. It makes me so happy. <laughs> The Marc Jacobs Liquid Lip Cream, and this is the shade Fawn Over Me, but in general, I wanted to mention this formula because it's one of my favorite liquid lipstick formulas. It doesn't try, doesn't dry down like 100% like a traditional liquid lip. It still retains a little bit of moisture, super comfortable to wear. And this color to me feels like a modern take on a 60s lip. Uh, it's kind of got that pale peachy pink thing going on, but there's not too much of a white base. I like it. Final lip favorite that I wanted to mention today, this is the Sisley Phyto Lip Twist Matte in the shade uh, 19, I believe it's called Ballet. And this to me is, is not a nude. This uh, is definitely veering into that warm pink territory, but it is absolutely very easy to wear. Also, it looks matte, but it's got a lot of slip as you press your lips together. It's that comfortable breed of matte lipsticks, really beautiful. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section, what is a product um, that has recently blown you away? I would love to know so that I may buy it. Come say hello to me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy um, because I would love to chat to you there. I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever it is that you're up to, and I shall speak to you all very soon. Bye.